Well, TV westerns were an audience favorite when television became popular in the late 1940s and 50s. It all began with Hopalong Cassidy in 1949, and it waned with the final episodes of Bonanza and Death Valley Days in the early 70s. Literally dozens of series portrayed life in the American Old West. At the peak in 1959, 30 such shows were airing during prime time. These traditional westerns began fading in popularity by the late 1960s. New elements were replacing the traditional settings of the Old West. Things like Little House on the Prairie come to mind. Let's take a look at probably the greatest of these traditional TV westerns. Gunsmoke, starring James Arness, Amanda Blake, Ken Curtis, and Milburn Stone, was television's number one ranked show from 1957 to 1961. When the show was expanded to an hour in the fall of 1961, it began to slip in the Nielsen ratings. By 1967, it had fallen out of the top 30. The show was actually scheduled to be canceled. CBS president Bill Paley and his wife Babe were huge fans of the show, so it was decided to move the show to the Gilligan's Island time slot of 8 p.m. on Mondays. That decision led to the abrupt end of Gilligan's Island. It made Gunsmoke fans happy and helped the show return to the top 10 in the Nielsen ratings. It stayed in the top 10 through the 1972-73 season. Though it continued in the top 30, the show was eventually canceled after a 20-year run in September of 1975. 30 TV westerns came and went during that 20-year stint. Gunsmoke received 15 Emmy nominations, and the show won four. James Arness was the one that won the role of Marshal Matt Dillon. Now, Raymond Burr and William Conrad were also considered for that lead role. In the end, though, producers considered both actors too heavy for the role. Now, whether John Wayne was actually considered for that role is a matter of debate. It's been rumored for years that he was offered the iconic role of Matt Dillon. They eventually went with James Arness, who looked and sounded a lot like John Wayne. Arness had suffered severe wounds in his right foot and leg during World War II. This damage to his foot made it difficult for him to walk and stand for great lengths of time. Therefore, any scenes that required any great amount of walking or standing for long periods of time were shot in the morning hours. This would be before his knees and feet would start to give out. During the 20-year run, and for all 635 episodes, he never caught a break. All of the other main characters on the show got breaks from the actual filming and episodes, but not James Arness. An interesting family note is that James Arness's younger brother was Peter Graves, Mr. Phelps of Mission Impossible. Now let's talk about Miss Kitty, or Amanda Blake. There was a little-known actress named Polly Bond who was the original choice for the role as Miss Kitty. Reportedly, she turned down the role because she claimed she would be putting a strain on her new marriage by making more money than her husband. While looking for a new Miss Kitty, Amanda Blake reportedly hounded the producers until she got cast for the part. Amanda played Miss Kitty for the first 19 seasons of its 20-year run. Actor Glenn Strange had played the head bartender Sam Noonan in Miss Kitty's Long Branch Saloon for 12 seasons. Sadly, he passed away from lung cancer in September of 1973. This death of her close friend was too great for Amanda Blake to handle. She just took the loss hard. She was written out of the show's script for the 20th season and didn't return. Now, Ken Curtis was Festus Hagen. After 290 episodes as Marshall Dillon's limping sidekick, Chester, Dennis Weaver decided to leave the Gunsmoke role. 
He was in pursuit of a broader acting career in both television and films. Veteran actor Ken Curtis had appeared in a few Gunsmoke episodes portraying a variety of different characters, including Festus Hagen in 1962. The director had worked with Curtis in these episodes, and in 1957 he had also directed him in an episode of Half Gun Will Travel. The director felt that Curtis would be perfect in developing his character Festus. So Festus was slowly phased in as a reliable sidekick and part-time deputy to Matt Dillon in 1965. For over 300 episodes, Ken Curtis faithfully portrayed the cantankerous, hillbilly-talking Deputy Marshal Festus. Doesn't it make you smile just to think of seeing old Festus? Now, Milburn Stone played Doc. James Arness was the only actor to appear in all 635 episodes of Gunsmoke. Milburn Stone, who played Doc or Doc Adams, is the only other character to appear in all 20 seasons, though in not every episode. There was a brief seven-week period in 1971 when Doc was missing from the show. Milburn Stone had suffered a heart attack and required bypass surgery. Character actor Pat Hingle portrayed Dr. John Chapman for six episodes while Stone was recovering from his surgery. For 16 seasons, Milburn Stone's character was known only as Doc or Doc Adams. Finally, the producers allowed the actor to choose the character's first name. Stone chose the name Galen. This was the surname of an ancient Greek physician and surgeon and philosopher who lived in the 2nd century AD. Certainly there is more to learn and enjoy from the TV series that spanned three different decades. We hope you've enjoyed learning a little more about the leading characters from television's number one western, Gunsmoke. Thank you so much for watching.